So what is the cost of comfort? In this video, I'm gonna go over the DIY complete solar setup I got right now. Come on. In this video, I'm gonna go over my com Come on, dude. It all just depends on how comfortable you want to be, how many panels you want to get. Go around here and show you what I got. So we're gonna start out with the cost of my solar panels. I got 28 of the solar ever 440 to 445 watt panels. And then just in 28 panels, I probably got about $6,700 into that. Of course, you can start out with more, or less. You know, I'm just gonna go, do an overview of my system to give you a couple ideas of where I would start if I were you, depending on what your budget is. And remember all the stuff I talk about in this video, I'll try to have it linked up down in the description. Most of the stuff I got from Signature Solar or Current Connected. So I'll go ahead and link those up to give you an idea of what the prices are now. Cause of course the prices are going up like everything else. I have 28 of the solar panels, 12 of them is 440 watts, and the rest are 445. And that's a little over 12 kilowatts of solar panels. And hey, you can start out wherever, you know, whatever you have the money to start out with, but that's just what I have so far. And my system is a work in progress, as you've probably seen if you've seen any of my other videos. I'm still working on it. It's not where I want it. I definitely want to add some more batteries. Then really the heart of the system is the grow watt inverters. I have three of those. I started out with one then got the second one, got the third one. Got them all at separate times. You know, you just buy the stuff as you can, as you go. You know, I've been working on it for the last year or so. And those are about $8.99, so let's say $900 a piece. Round that out and say that was $2,800. And these grow watts, you know, they put out about 5,000 uh, watts a piece, so 5 kW a piece, so that's 15 kW I have to output to my house. So I just can use the power from my batteries and during the day from the solar, and if I had a lot more batteries, I could definitely run my entire house all the time off grid. But like I said, my stuff's still a work in progress. So I have four batteries. So that's, I got a little over 20 kilowatt hours of battery power for nights. So I have part of my house on a sub panel and I have that running off grid all the time, day, night, all year long, no matter if it's cloudy, rainy, whatever. And it seems to work out. It's worked out for me so far. And during the day, I can put my whole house off grid because my kids are homeschooled. You know, there's somebody in my house all the time. I got a large family. We use a lot of power, washer and dryer running all day. So it definitely really helps out to be able to run your whole house, at least during the day or a part of the time with solar. So if you ever have an emergency, the grid goes down, which the power has went out a few times with us. You know, we've had Hurricane Matthew, Florence, different things going on, just regular storms. You know, Hurricane Ian, when it blew through here in North Carolina, you know, we did lose power for just a couple hours. It wasn't bad at all, but I had the backup power. Everybody, as far as I could see, no power. My lights are still on and kicking in the middle of the night. Still have my air conditioner running. You know, everything's good to go. My refrigerator, two freezers. And it's just a good feeling to have that comfort to know, hey, my family's gonna be taken care of, even if there's a problem, you know, at least I have something. It's definitely better than nothing. I mean, it's definitely not perfect. You know, it's not all out. You know, if we have, you know, rainy days and cloudy days for a month straight, am I gonna have some problems? Probably, but I have other options and I can talk about that at the end of the video. And all of these batteries with shipping ended up being, let's say $1,600 a piece, say about $6,400 there. So on top of these 20 kilowatt hours of batteries, basically I have a bus bar, the, the Victron Energy, the, the Lynx power in and the power distributor. That's what I got my batteries going into because that can take a thousand amps. So I definitely know I'm not gonna have a problem. You don't have to have that. Let's say that was about $400 for, for all of that that I needed for that, the Victron stuff. That's definitely not something you have to have. You can get just a regular power distribution bar, but I just wanted something that was gonna be a little better, a little beefier. So when I upgrade in the future and I have a lot more batteries and I'm pulling a lot of power out of there, I don't have to have, I don't have to worry about a problem or a fire or something melting or something crazy happening. And with these three grow out inverters, they're 240 volt, so they don't have a split phase. So you gotta buy an auto transformer to have just split phase. So, so I have a transformer, the solar edge transformer, that's giving me my 120, my split phase, it, it just splits the power and it can use up about 5,000 watts off of that. So if your house is gonna be using more than 5,000 watts off of 120, you might wanna go with a different option. I don't even think Signature Solar sells these anymore. They sell one that goes with the grow watt that's made by them. 
that's going to perform better. And I think they have one that goes up to like 12,000 watts now. So if you need something that's really using a lot of 120, which most people aren't, if my house is not using that much, probably nobody is because I have a bunch of kids, big old family, and they're not doing it. They're here all the time. I have the PV disconnect, wires going to the batteries. I have circuit breakers because I bought a sub panel to put all this stuff in so I can sub feed my house. And then my electric car, I have a plug out here, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I can just use this panel to run everything that's solar. And then I put a surge protector on it and different things. And then with the grow watts, if you want to be able to look the stuff up on Wi-Fi and use the app, you know, you're going to have to have the Wi-Fi dongle, which I do have. You know, that's another, I can't remember, about 40 or $50. And not to mention the ground mount that I built, which cost me a lot more than it probably should have, but you know, the price of wood was really high, of course, when I built the stuff. So you may be better off if you have somebody locally you can buy a ground mount system from. You might be better off spending like $1,000 with them to buy one, depending on the size of your array, than spending like 1,000 or 1,200 that I spent probably at least on the wood and the materials to build mine. Definitely don't have a problem with mine, but basically it's the same cost. You just went and bought one that it is if you build your own. And I had to do all the calculations and figure everything out. If you just buy one, you know, it's already gonna be pretty much set and you're not gonna have a lot of problems getting the thing set up. So all in all, to be able to run my house all day long, off grid my entire house, which uses a lot of power, I'm washer and dryer and stuff running all day. You know, I have a lot of people washing, using the water heater and stuff like that and have two AC units on my house that's running. I have another video about what all my system will run. So if you're interested in that, hey, I'll link it above. You can go check that out. So all in all, I'll say I have about $18,000 or so, and that is in your wiring, you know, your breakers and everything that's going along with this system. 12 kilowatts of solar. 15 kilowatt of inverting power and 20 kilowatts of battery and my battery storage i'm definitely looking to upgrade that you know hey you just do it as you can as you have the money just buy another battery or two or three or whatever you can afford at the time so that's definitely my next goal more battery power because once i get enough battery i'm gonna be able to run my house pretty much all the time off grid unless we have some severe uh, cloudy weather for weeks at a time or whatever, then of course you're gonna have to supplement that. But depending on your budget, if you're looking at one of those uh, little solar generators that everybody's selling, and but if you feel comfortable doing your own DIY one, what I would start out with is basically go get you an inverter and go get you one of these batteries and you're gonna have that thing charged all the time. So if your power goes out, bam, you just switch on your, your, your battery power and at least be able to make it through the night with your fridge and some lights and just some minor things. You might not be able to run your whole air conditioner or heater on your house or anything like that, but hey, you can keep your food uh, good, run a fan, you know, run maybe a small heater for a little while, run a CPAP machine, just run the, the major things that you really need to get you to that one day or one night of having a power outage. And I would definitely say you can probably do that for $23, $24, $2,500. And sometimes that's gonna be a thousand dollars cheaper than some of these solar, big solar generators out there. And a DIY one's gonna have a lot more power because one of these batteries is gonna have five, five kilowatt hours. And a lot of those batteries, even the biggest one's only gonna be about two or two and a half kilowatt hours. And then if you really just wanna start out and go even bigger and you wanna get solar panels and everything, something to run your whole house, just depending on the size of your house, you can contact Signature Solar and they can definitely hook you up with everything you're gonna need to make that happen. And if you got any questions about what you would need for your house, leave me a comment down below. Hey, I'll try to help you out if I can, because hey, everybody needs to be as self-reliant as possible because you just can't trust anything these days, your grid, your water, anything. In my opinion, we should all be working towards being more self-reliant because of your comfort and your family comfort. I mean, what is that worth to you? You know, what does that cost worth to you? I mean, this is a lot less than most used cars nowadays. So, I mean, for this price and having that comfort knowing, hey, if the power goes out, my family's gonna be okay at least. And then you may be wondering, why did I only do 20 kilowatt hours of battery so far? I have all the solar. Well, I have an electric car that has 40 kilowatt hours of battery in it. So technically I can use that, put an inverter on that. This 18 amp charger from Signature Solar, 48 volt. Gonna run off your standard 120 plug. So I can plug a 12 volt inverter up to my 12 volt battery in my electric car, turn my electric car on, plug this up, and basically I can pull one kilowatt at a time out of it and charge my batteries to supplement my batteries throughout the night. So basically that's gonna be another 10 or 12 kilowatt hours of power that you don't have right here. So really I'd have 30 or 32 kilowatt hours of battery to run my whole house if I really needed to. 
It's about taking all the things you have in your life and trying to stack them on top of each other to better help you be more self-reliant. And you can use that same thing and hook a generator up and run a generator for two or three or four hours to supplement your battery power as well if you didn't have a good solar day. This is just different things you need to factor into the cost of your system and what you're really gonna need. It's just not the system, you know, there's nothing, there's not just, you can just have a generator and have a bunch of gas and you're always gonna be good. You just don't know. Your, your solar, hey, the sun might not be out for a long time. You don't just don't know. But it's better to have something than nothing. Be able to supplement and have a lot more power than most people that are gonna have nothing. So if you have any more questions, hey, just leave that in the comments below. Hey, if you like this kind of video, hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And remember, I have that link. So if you wanna see everything my system can power, bam, go check it out. And thanks for watching.